um, I've had my struggles. Uh, I still, I think on a daily basis, you have to learn to accept it every day. Um, sometimes you are like really on it, like, yeah, I'm gonna take care of myself today. And sometimes you're like, eh, we're just gonna put that aside because I have more important things to do. Um, but eventually you just kind of realize, um, you know, your health is the most important thing and you have one body and if you don't take care of this one body, you're, you're kind of out of luck for the rest of your life. And um, I, I also have celiac, so another one of my organs has, you know, shut down and kind of turned against me. And, you know, I always just kind of joke that my body hates me, but um, I, it, the, but I think the most important thing to realize is that you know your blood sugar affects everything, so your heart and your your kidneys and your eyes and you know like I have glasses and it amazes me like every time I get new glasses like how much my eyesight has gotten worse because you put on your new glasses like wow I can see again and and you know so so acceptance with diabetes is the most important part because then you can kind of move on and you start to realize that it's just something you gotta do it's just kind of a responsibility that you have that maybe not everybody else has, but you know, everybody has their own cross to I guess, so. Well, a few years ago, I tried a continuous glucose monitor and I absolutely hated it because it was, I, I wear a pump, so I already wear one little patch and you know, I already have needles going into me every day. And um, so the CGM was just kind of an inconvenience and it, it I, seemed like an invasion to my body and it spent more time calibrating um, you know so that it could work than it did actually working and then it would fall out the next day and then I would have to start all over again and it was just kind of like one of those things it's like what's the point if it's not doing its job and so I went a few years without anything and I kind of started to notice um, that I, I stopped waking up in the middle of the night when I, when I would go low it used to be when I hit about 60 I would, I would wake up and kind of like cold sweats and be confused and why I was up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, and I started to drive, you know, I got my permit and when I was 15 I got my permit and I started to get my hours in. And I noticed that the more I concentrated on another task, the less in tune I was with how my blood sugar was. And it was even really evident in like when I would take a test, one, <laughs> there was one math test and math is my favorite subject and I love algebra and you know, my whole math test was perfect until the last page and then like the whole last page it was like you know stupid you know simple adding mistakes and simple multiplication mistakes that I would never ever make if you know I was kind of in the right mind so to speak and um, when I checked my blood sugar after I turned it in because I kind of stood up and I was like oh, you know like something's off after I turned it in I was like in the 50s or the 40s or something and so you know you could tell when I got my test back that Towards the end of the test, I really started to drop low, but I didn't notice it because I was, you know, focused on, a, a, on another task. And so that really concerned me when I was driving because, you know, it's a huge responsibility. And my grandfather um, was actually kind of the one, he likes to cut out newspaper articles and send them to me when they have anything to do with my life. And so he kind of cut one out that was about um, diabetic alert dogs. And I said, Mom, like, this is really cool. So they're like, well, maybe this is something that we should do. And um, so, you know, the more I kind of talked about it, the more I was like, yeah, let's, let's do this. You know, because diabetes is a 24-hour thing. Um, and when I'm, you know, like I said, focused on another task, it, it, in a lot of ways, she'll be kind of doing my job for me and um, kind of making sure that she takes care of me when I'm not taking care of myself. And I think that, you know, constant companionship will really benefit me in a way that I can, you know, make sure that I'm so quote unquote living my life and she'll just kind of be there to like keep me in check. And so I think that's really important. And you know, my mom is a saint. She's great. You know, when I was diagnosed at six, we had a, we had a, I have a brand new baby, baby brother. And so she jokes that she never, she hasn't had a full night of sleep since, you know, I was diagnosed and since he was born because having diabetics, like having a newborn baby, you know, you kind of always got to be on guard. And so I think that'll kind of take the pressure off of her because you're laying in bed and you're like, I am so tired. Like, why am I not asleep yet? And you realize it's because you're like, maybe it's because I don't know if I'm going to wake up in the morning, you know, and, and over time it's become more and more, especially when I started realizing that um, 
my mom wasn't just catching me at like 60s, it was like she was catching me at, in the 30s and in the 20s and you know, and those take a long time to recover from. So even if we catch it at 30, you know, we treat with a juice or you know, glucose or whatever, um, and then I go back to bed, an hour later I could still be in the 30s. And so you know, it's just kind of amazing um, you never know what's going to happen in that hour when you're not, you know, when you have to kind of let it take its course, whether you're going to continue to drop or whether you're going to go back up and you'll be okay. And so it, it's kind of like, you know, what are the chances? And so definitely like when I, when I go to spend the night at friends or something and I go low, you know, I kind of just occupy myself all night, like on my phone or something because I, I don't want to go to sleep and, you know, potentially keep dropping. And so, you know, I just, in, instead of going to sleep, I just keep myself up myself up all night so that I can kind of catch those lows. You know, I, I, I love school, I love to learn, and I, you know, I was like, diabetes is not going to get in the way of me going off to college and living on my own and pursuing my life. And, you know, if I can't sleep through the night because I'll drop, you know, and potentially die in my sleep, you know, there, what, what makes, you know, anyone think that I can go off and live on my own and, you know, live in a dorm and live kind of that normal college life where you're becoming independent um, if, if, you know, I can't even trust myself enough to sleep through the night. Mm -hmm. So that, that was kind of the scary thing that was like, we, we really need to do something about this. And so she's kind of going to be a, a replacement for my mom, so to speak.